5th century BC. Greece is not a single nation. Instead, it's made up of over 1,000 smaller city-states. Two of the most powerful are Athens and Sparta. These two states are often at war and are built on very different philosophies. Athens is cultivating a democratic republic. Sparta is building a warrior state. 480 BC, Persia is the most powerful empire the world has ever known. They control Asia Minor, Mesopotamia, and Egypt. Now, they set their sights on the Greek Peninsula. A Persian force of 500,000 soldiers invades Greece. They are met at Thermopylae by King Leonidas and 300 of his finest Spartan warriors. What ensues is one of history's most famous battles. 7,000 Greek soldiers, led by King Leonidas and the Spartan 300, hold off the advancing Persians for six days. It is considered one of the most astounding feats in military history. But a week into the battle, the Persian forces are finally able to outflank and defeat the Spartans. Emboldened by their victory at Thermopylae, the Persian army drives further into Greece, conquering the cities of Boeotia and Attica. Then, they burn Athens to the ground. The new Spartan king, Cleombrotus, decides Sparta will not help Athens. He orders a wall built across the isthmus separating Sparta from the Greek mainland. But within a month, Cleombrotus dies suddenly. Sparta gets a new king. He is Pausanias, a general in the Spartan army. He is now a true warrior king, and he is about to change the course of history. September 480 BC, the Persian army, 300,000 strong, has conquered much of northern Greece, and they are moving south. The destiny of Greece, and perhaps Western civilization, depends on defeating the Persians. 479 BC, the Persian campaign to take the Greek peninsula is at a critical point. In October, the Persians brutally sack Athens, burning the city for the second time in less than a year. Athens lacks the numbers and strength to defeat the Persians. They're desperate for help. They turn to the warriors of their longtime adversary, Sparta. The Spartan army marches toward the Greek mainland. The Persians respond by pulling their force of 300,000 men back from Athens to the city of Plataea. The Persians' plan lure the Spartans into this open battlefield where the Persian archers and cavalry will have a clear shot into the Spartan lines. The Greek force makes camp at the base of the mountains. 100,000 in total, they are led by Pausanias and his 45,000 Spartan warriors. The Spartans take position on the right flank, the position reserved for the best warriors. In the valley below, 300,000 Persians, led by the general Mardonius, are camped on the other side of the river Asopus. This is a position of strength for the Persians. The waiting game begins. For over a week, both sides sacrifice animals to their gods, looking for an omen to determine when and how to attack. Finally, the Persians make the first move. Mardonius sends some of his mounted archers to harass the Spartans, hoping to goad them into attacking. The Spartans don't fall for the bait. Instead, they kill the lead Persian archer and remain on the high ground. But now, it's almost 10 days into the standoff, and the Spartans are running low on provisions. Lacking water and concerned about his dwindling supplies, Pausanias orders the Greeks into what looks like a disorganized withdrawal. Mardonius, seeing this, believes the Greeks are retreating in fear. He commits everything and orders all of his troops to cross the river and attack. It was a huge mistake. The entire Persian force moves away from the river, away from the flatland of the valley, and up toward the high ground. This is exactly where the Spartans want them. Pausanias orders his Spartan warriors into the phalanx, and they begin to move out. The sight of the advancing Spartans catches the Persians by surprise, and now they're on ground that is too hilly and rocky for their cavalry to mount an attack. The Persians give the word and black out the sky with thousands of arrows. The Spartans are ready for this. The training kicks in, the shields come up, and the advance continues unabated. Pausanias gives the word. 
for the hoplite run. And again, as a single unit, they go. The Spartan phalanx moves in perfect precision down the hill and straight into the Persian infantry forces. The phalanx crashes into the Persian lines, pushing them back and starting the close quarter combat. Over half the Persian army, almost 200,000 men, were killed that day. The survivors retreat. Within six months, the Persians leave Greece never to return. As I walk the ground where their victory took place, I can't help thinking that without the bravery of Popsimeus and his Spartan warriors, we as a society would be very different.